Oh, hi. Good to see you. Just hanging out here with my pet lizard, Beatrice. I think that's her name. My name's Theo Langison, and I am the Camp OV Camp Director, swag. Um, and it's second year in a row, night of the Nick, we're distanced. We'd rather be together, but we're making the best of the situation, which is what a lot of folks here at Eastside have been doing this whole year, working really hard to be uh, adaptive and, and responsive to the needs of the community to make sure that we are connecting the dots, breaking down barriers, helping our clients. So I thought it'd be a great idea to go around talk to folks, see what they've been doing this past year and how they've been making the best of it. So let's go see how they're doing. All right, so now we're gonna go head over to Menlo, see what's happening, see what uh, Anga's got cooking up. And if I'm clairvoyant, she might even just come out this door right as I approach it. Hello. <laughs> uh, what's up, Anga, how Hi, you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. You wanna just uh, sit over here? Have a yeah, that would be great. great. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Nice um, to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this year, yes, it's been a, a, a big old year. Epic. So many barriers, so many hurdles, yes. uh, and I'm sure you cleared them all. <laughs> uh, can you tell me just a bit, a bit about some of the good work you're doing over here at Menlo? I would be happy to share. Hey, Malia, how Hi, are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Oh, I'm happy to see you. So we're just talking about what's going on at Menlo. How long have you been here? Five years. Five years, and so what are your graduation goals? Uh, I wanna graduate, Okay. go to college, yeah. study criminology. Excellent. And yeah, That's I wanna amazing. be a lawyer. How would you say you've changed at Menlo? Well, before I came to Menlo, I'm not even gonna lie, I was a runaway. I was doing bad things and I was already, I was always going to JDC. But then I started coming here, I got our probation. I had a baby and I'm about to graduate. And life is great. Malia is a rock star. We all know this and now you do too. <laughs> Resilience and perseverance, that's what this is about. We are leaning into social emotional learning and leadership. So we've got tons of uh, ways for students to learn. Um, we, we had to do away with internships, but we started virtual internships. Mm. We had to do away with work-based credit, but we started virtual work-based credit. Mm. We had to um, kind of pivot everything so that students could learn on their own, at their own pace, and accelerate. So we're, we're kind of leaning into this space of trying to think more about, less about credit recovery and more about acceleration and leadership. So that's that's the good news from Menlo. That's really beautiful. Thank you. And I think as good as any, uh, uh, a moment to end and let us get out of this rain. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, it's raining, so let's get out of the rain and under this nice new gazebo. Oh, hey, there's Paul. So part of my job is to to find all those really great points and see if there can there isn't more ways of connecting them. Mm. Um, one way that we're trying to make those connections are is with with the structure here. Yeah, tell me about it. It's brand new, with a really generous grant from from uh, the uh, Hennepin County. We were able to make make this uh, this gazebo. One of the ways that we plan on using this is uh, with a residential remodeling program. We've, we're trying to focus in on a, a niche in the market. Hanging doors, installing toilets, basic roofing. We don't yeah. want to make master roofers, but we want to have a whole bunch of people that aren't afraid of those things yeah. doing those things, That's being so able great. to do those things. So we had a pilot in which we had five young people from the community. Um, we, uh, we connected through some uh, institutional partners. We connected through, through uh, Ujama Place and uh, also the Bridge for Youth. We had a number of volunteers from RJM that were scheduled to just be a kind of uh, uh, expert coach that were going to join us while we were building things. It turned out that having this, this expert in the room that could demonstrate these things and almost just be, spend like a 
a casual afternoon building with young people. Like mm -hmm. that space that was created with just like, let's make something together was way more powerful than any kind of set curriculum. Mm. And this kind of like, you need to complete these tasks. It was, let's spend time with an expert, try something, maybe no, do it perfectly, but this expert is telling you, oh no, 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 let's, or let's, well, how about you try it this way? Mm -hmm. We okay. really do need to have a space for people to come together and share those ideas so that we can make new things that are impactful. So it's been so great to talk to all the folks here at Eastside, they're doing great work. But now we're gonna hop on the bus and Joe is gonna take us around to some of our, our offsite places. We're gonna to talk to the folks who are also doing work out in the community. So let's go. Come on aboard. <laughs> Good to see you, Joe. Great to see you guys. <laughs> Have a fun time. Here we are, Luxton Park, and we're gonna go have a chat with Lissa, who's gonna tell us about the out-of-school time programming that she runs here with Gene Emmons. So let's go see what Lissa's got to say. Hi, Lissa. Hi. How you doing? Great, how are you? I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. Um, it's been a, a heck of a year. Yeah. A, lo a lot of changes, a lot of, lot, of, lot of wild stuff happening. Can yeah. you tell us a bit about um, what this year has been like for you? Well, it started off uh, in a flurry, like, you know, most, most places and schools and we really knew that um, families needed somebody to come in and just help them with getting the kids out of the house, getting kids online, getting computers, access, things like that. Um, my co-manager Jean and I decided that we would take a look at what they did back during the, the Spanish flu and it was outdoor classrooms. So we thought, you know, we can, we can do that. So we got fire pits, you know, the weather was starting to turn in the fall and we outfitted the kids um, with winter gear and boots and hats. We got donations from the Prospect Park Neighborhood Association to make sure that we had the teachers and the staff and the things that we needed. And we moved outside. Wow, yeah. wow, that's so cool. It's almost like retro, right? Like you look back, you're like, what, what did they do back in the day? <laughs> that's so great. What, um, have there been any like surprisingly awesome things about the out outdoor classrooms? I would say, everything. We did uh, cooking over fires. A lot of our kids hadn't explored the woods and the, uh, the different wildlife around the neighborhood of Prospect Park. So we had naturalists come in and talk about uh, native plants and animals. We did a lot of fort building, sledding, snowball fights, a lot of natural science. We, we used what we had around the park of Luxton to incorporate that into different you know, educational opportunities, things in a different way. The kids were sitting on computers all day doing distance learning, and we wanted to give them an opportunity to have some joy and something hands-on that they could experience here in the park. One of the most rewarding things to hear this year was uh, one, of our, one of our students had gone back to school in person and they said, tell us a place in the community where you feel like you belong and where you feel like you can be yourself. And he said at Luxton Park. Ooh! Yeah. Ooh. Yay. <laughs> That's great. You hear that folks? Doing great work here, making kids feel like they're a part of a community because they are. It's so great. Well, thank you so much, Lissa. Yeah, good to see you. Um, I hope you have a great summer. Yes, we will. Uh, you spend we'll some here. time outside. We'll be here. Yeah, that's so great. Good to see you. You too. Thanks a lot. Ah! <laughs> All right, so here we are at the Glendale Food Shelf, and we're going to go talk to Rob and Mary and see what's happening. Let's go. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. What's up, Mary? What's up, Rob? How's it going? Doing good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Um, Mary, do you want to tell us a bit about uh, the work that you do here at the at the food shelf? Why, sure. Um, we have a good team of people that help us out daily, and we service a lot of people. And uh, because of the pandemic, we have to change our delivery model to where we have volunteers that come in and help us prepackage food and so we can deliver it to our buildings. Uh, because we're essential workers, we want to continue to get that food product out to the residents that we know can use it. And most of our residents either have limited or no transportation to get out to the retail stores. So we are kind of busy, but it's a wonderful thing. Well, there have been a, a lot of good support coming to us financially. We've also, through our partners, like Second Harvest Heartland and the food group, 
through churches that are supporting, have been annual supporters to the Glendale Food Shelf, like St. Francis Cabrini and, and the Prospect Park Methodist, the volunteer people who have who have been part of our program, who have been helped with packing boxes, and a lot of them have given con contributions of money as well. They've seen the importance of it and have supported us that way too, so we're hoping to find ways to keep that going. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mary and Rob, for telling us about how you over here at the Food Shelf are connecting the dots and supporting our community. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I'm here with Bob Foster, chair of the board of Eastside. Gonna ask him some questions, uh, let's see what's going on. Hey Bob, how's it going? It's going fabulous, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing really well, it's good how, to see you. How does Camp Ovi look for the year? Oh, it looks really, really awesome. It's so beautiful up there, hope to get you up there soon. Yeah, I'll go, awesome. absolutely. Awesome, great. So, uh, Bob, you support Eastside in a lot of different ways. Um, can you tell us a bit about why it's important for you to be a supporter of Eastside? Absolutely. Uh, I've been on the board of Eastside for over 25 years and in May I'm going to start my third term as board chair and I, I guess it's part of a commitment of our, our office. Uh, we, you know, we have a firm belief that you raise communities up from the bottom and down from the top and what that means to me is that we have to be supportive of agencies like Eastside because of their commitment uh, to improving the lives of the people they serve one person at a time. And so, uh, you know, we've tried over that 25 years uh, to provide the financial and person power support of Eastside so that they can continue to work on their mission. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Bob. You have a great day. Uh, right. Take care. Look forward to seeing you uh, virtually at the event. All right. Good. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> All right, Joe, thank you so much for driving us around today. It was really a blast. My pleasure. Um, you're out here in the community. Can you tell us a bit about your job? Well, I, I, the name implies uh, I'm a senior driver. I drive seniors around to doctor's appointments and to places that they have to get to where they don't have a ride or, or no way of getting to their appointments. That, that's a big void that we fill, uh, like wheelchairs. Uh, those wheelchair rides cost an awful, awful lot to get to get a ride to a doctor. Well, we're here, they're just a fraction of the cost of what, uh, I mean, they don't even have to pay if they don't, if they can't afford it, which is unbelievable. Uh, you know, th we give rides to seniors that just, if they can't afford a, a taxi or those things, it, we, get, we, we get out, we, we take care of them. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. Um, well, thank you so much for, for talking to us today, Joe, and can't wait to get you up at Camp Ovi. It's my pleasure. I can't wait to be there either. Awesome. See awesome. you later. All right, take it easy. Bye-bye. Well, thank you so much for following me around for this video. It was so great to talk to all the folks at Eastside and throughout the city who are working incredibly hard to connect the dots in our community and really meet people where they're at whether that's the quarry or a senior high rise or uh, a park or uh, even in the street. Uh, we're working really hard to serve the community. So thank you for your support and we hope it continues. Thanks so much, Theo. That was such an amazing tour of everything Eastside has brought to the community in the past year. As we close out the night, I'm joined here by fellow board member, Harper Rooney. We just want to thank you for joining us tonight for the 2021 Night at the Nick. As you can see, the work that Eastside does is incredibly important to the community. That's right, Jai. We hope that, you, we hope that our tour showed you how Eastside truly connects the dots and supports all members of the community. But here's the thing, we can't do it without you. As a board, we've raised more than $10,000 in support of Eastside for Night at the Nick. Our challenge to attendees of Night at the Nick is to match our giving. Many have already donated, we're already past $4,000 but we need you to chip in whatever is meaningful to you to hit our community challenge and ensure that we can continue meeting the needs of the community. Visit our site at esns.org slash donate to contribute to the life-changing programs that Eastside offers. We all can be part of the change and make an impact when we work together. We can continue to connect the dots and create a, a strong, long-lasting community that we all want to be part of. Donate today and join the many neighbors who have already given. Help make our community a place where all of our voices matter and we all thrive together. Thank you again for joining us as we certainly hope to see everyone in person next year.